so let's begin with the first idea, which is what is grieving and loss? And many of us are experiencing grief and loss during this COVID crisis. Um, but what I'm going to talk about goes far beyond that. So grief is that pain experience that is due to a major change that we didn't want to have happen in our lives. And it is a very normal response. It's a response to losses. There have been deaths. There have been drastic changes in our daily routines and the ways that we usually uh, get a feeling of stability and comfort. We have had to really try to find other ways to achieve that for ourselves. So what's important? What's really important is for all of us to identify what have we lost? We've been deprived of our normal rituals, uh, hospital visitation, funerals, church services that we are used to. So it's pretty obvious what are the primary losses. For some of it has been the death of a family member or the death of a loved one. But I want you to give some thought to what are the things that you have lost that others don't recognize? They may be more subtle and they are very unique to you. So take some time to figure that out. And the big piece that for this COVID crisis, it's a feeling that our life is on hold. We're shocked, we're disbelieving, we're in denial. We may feel tremendous amounts of anxiety or distress. We may be angry, we may have periods of sadness that we think we can't explain. We may lose our sleep, we may lose our appetite, we may feel bored. For some, we feel depression. The challenge is how do we deal with this new normal in our lives? How do we cope the uncertainty that's cur currently occurring to us? We are being bombarded with all kinds of information. Wear a mask, don't wear a mask, go out, don't go out. So first of all, across the board, we need to acknowledge our grief. We need to know that it's okay for us to be hurting, to be angry, and that these feelings are normal. And that for us, grief can only occur with love. Great Grief means great love. That's the first one. The second one, we're not alone. We are, this is one time that we are all in this together, but we do need to reach out. We need to reach out. We need to be certain that we find or develop trusted support systems for ourselves. We need to be creative as to how we do that. This Zoom call is one of those ways, but we need to be very thoughtful about we don't have Zoom, we have the good old tel telephone. How do we talk to people? How do we bring people into our circle? First responders, clergy, parents, all of us need to develop relationships with somebody that gets it in order to have somebody to talk with. There's a variety of ways that people are coping with their grief. We need to be able to talk to somebody who we know uh, understands where we're coming from. And because our stories are sacred, we need to share those stories. We need to share to make sense of what we're talking about. It helps to make sense of our stories. There's a lot of emotion involved in grief. Um, there was a day I will share with you where I simply hit the wall at a particular point in time and I had no idea why. I had some inklings but I was not expecting to slam against the wall psychologically. I've been doing pretty well. And that moment was um, very upsetting to me because I thought, I'm rolling along, doing okay. And I got past it, I got through it, but it was very frightening at the time because it came out of nowhere. In addition to understanding the grief process, we must understand that life, and we know this, will be different and that's our new reality. We need to adjust to whatever it is we've lost. We need to process our emotions. We need to let go of how things were and move into how things are. Adjust to the new changed world and to adjust to different processes of the new changed world. For many of you, school has started. After retiring as a psychologist, I'm now a university professor. I will be teaching just like I'm talking to you. This is not my favorite way of talking to people. I'm a people person. I thrive on the interaction, but that's my world and I have to make that new normal work for me and for the students I teach. 
I said I'm a child psychologist, so I do want to talk a bit about helping children cope. Children grieve differently, and at the younger stages, we may see children regress. A toddler who has learned how to potty train, learned how to sleep in their own bed, may really truly uh, regress and go back to, to being a baby. We need to encourage children to express whatever feelings they are feeling in whatever ways they can. For children, that can be drawing, that can be play, that can be dramatic play, it can be reading books about loss. We need to kind of aim what we're doing to the age of the child. And if there are more than one child in the family, then we uh, titrate that to the child in question. Don't ignore your own grief. Stick to the routines you have as much as possible. And most importantly, and we are very fortunate as Orthodox Christians, discuss our faith and the belief in life eternal for any situation where there has been doubt. Help children pray, uh, pray as a family, pray for strength, pray for God's love. We have plenty of tools in our Orthodox toolkit. We have rituals for mourning. We have the 40 day memorial service. We have our church services. We have the sacrament of communion. We have prayer. Dig deep and use our faith to help us get through this time. And in closing, I want you to remember the empathy that Jesus showed. Um, he showed it in one of his miracles. He also felt pain and sorrow. In the raising of Lazarus from the dead, John 11, 38 to 44, when Jesus encounters Lazarus' sister Mary, after Lazarus had been dead for four days, Mary was weeping. Seeing her pain and sorrow, Jesus also wept. As Lord, he knew that he was going to raise Lazarus back to, from, to life in a matter of a few minutes. Yet so deep was and is his love for her and indeed for all of us that he wept. Nevertheless, Jesus was moved from his very innards, from the depth of his being with love and mercy. Let's try to follow his example.